I am a mom of four. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2012, in which I found a stupid dumb breast cancer, and I love to cook. I've always had lumpy breasts, and one morning I was laying in bed and I felt my breast and I felt something and I thought that's weird and I pressed down on the lump and I had black discharge come out of my nipple. Black discharge should never come out of any pore in your body. I was volunteering as a just a volunteer for a breast cancer organization and just knowing that there was something in my breast and I didn't know what I was and being surrounded by all these people who had breast cancer was it was intense it was like panicky. Uh, I called my doctor and he set up a mammogram for Monday. This was on a Saturday that I found it. And the weekend was long, like, you know, just wondering what was going on. And so I went to the mammogram and the tech did the mammogram and black discharge went all over the machine. And she did a sonogram and she said, I feel the lump, but I don't see anything. And she checked normal on my results. And she said, you should check with your doctor in six months. So I finally found a doctor that would see me. And she really didn't think it was much of anything. So she just, she, she said, for peace of mind, let's just take the lump out. And the next week when I went for my results is when I heard it. In my gut, I always knew what it was, but you want so desperately to believe what the doctor's saying, oh, it's nothing, don't worry about it, you're gonna be fine. It was hard. When I found it, it was two, three months after my 40th birthday. Nobody said to me, oh, you know, you're at the prime age of getting breast cancer. My grandmother had breast cancer, but she had it when she was like in her 60s. Uh, I think many doctors still attribute it to like a grandmother disease. I actually denied having chemotherapy. I refused to have it. About six months later, I had gone to the doctor. She asked how chemo was going and I told her that I refused it. She made me do 33 rounds of radiation. With radiation, people really sweep it under the rug. They think it's not as difficult as chemo. They think that it doesn't affect you as much when quite honestly, it's just as bad. I didn't feel human at all. Ironically, if you think about it, they tell you how safe radiation is, but then they run out of the room and shut a metal door. I just think that we, we don't pay enough attention to those going through radiation, and that was a big eye-opening uh, experience for me. I was quite scared during all of it. My keloids were really aggravating me. You could actually like see them through a shirt. And I went to my plastic surgeon and I said, you know, um, these keloids, you have to do something about it. They're really killing me. And he looked at me and he said, I'm not worried about the keloids. Your implants are going into your armpits. My plastic surgeon looked at me and he said, we need to take these out. Thanks to cancer, I gained about 25 pounds at that time. So I decided to do the DIP, which is a tram flap surgery. Uh, it's 10 hours, um, three days in the ICU and two days in the hospital. It's uh, eight drains. Um, it's a very intense surgery. I did feel a little bit like I was getting a bit of myself back because it was my own body in retrospect. I don't think I would have done anything. When I was diagnosed, my doctor said to me, who's your plastic surgeon? I think that's society putting that into our heads. When the truth be told, all patients going through breast cancer should have their mastectomy, they should stay flat, they should let their body heal for a year, go through your treatment, go through everything that you're dealing with physically, and then mentally come around to having breasts put in. And maybe you will, maybe you won't, but you have to let your body and mind heal together before you do that. It's too much all at once. It's just too much for our body and too much for our mind. The hard part came with insurance was uh, the year after my mastectomy, my doctor ordered an MRI, which is normal. You know, they wanna check and see you know where you are at now. And insurance denied it and they sent me a bill. And I looked at the bill and I was like, what is this for? So I called them up and the woman said to me, uh, well, we have to verify that you had breast cancer. And I said, let me come down there and I'll take my shirt off and I'll show you that I had breast cancer. And they did take it off. But I think what people don't understand is that's stressful. Like getting that bill for, th I think it was like $2,500. You see it and you immediately like think you have to pay for it and you get quite nervous about it. 70% of breast cancer patients have low self body image, 70%, it's a huge number. The suicide rate goes up with, with any type of cancer. We have severe depression, you know, especially with, cancer, with breast cancer, our hormones are affected. 
your hormones are what balance you. So when you have a mastectomy and I had a hysterectomy, I had a full hysterectomy, you've now taken most of my hormones out and I can't balance that on my own. And asking for help is really hard because everybody wants us to be okay. And it's time that we start talking about that part of it. Depression, anxiety is enormous in the cancer community. And people are scared to say anything because they, they think they're supposed to be okay because we por portrayed that picture. When I was a year out of treatment, I went to my oncologist and he looked at me and he said, all right, you did great, I'll see you next year. And he patted me on the back and he set me on my way. And I sat on my couch and cried because I was so confused. I was like, what just happened? Did, did I just have cancer? Did, did this just all happen? Was this a dream? And I started having PTSD. Um, I'll never forget the first panic attack that I had. I was at the bank and at the counter, there was a dish of hard candy. And all of a sudden, my chest got really tight and I was sweating and I couldn't even talk to the teller. I was, I, I had actually had to leave. I was like, what is my problem? And I sat in the car and I was trying to breathe and trying to get myself under control and I realized what it was. Every day that I went to radiation or went to my oncologist's office, there was a bowl of hard candy. And just that little thing that we pass you you probably pass by it all the time don't even think about it set me off and i realized that if i'm not the only if i'm going through this i am not the only one and i started talking about ptsd after cancer and all these people started messaging me yes i have that i can't i can't look at you know a wig or i can't look at one person told me that they can't look at they can't look at baked ziti and i know that seems silly but they were getting meals brought to them every single day, so they couldn't look at food. Another person couldn't look at ginger. Like there was all these things going on and we're not talking about that part of it. We think that after diagnosis, everything is okay. And I think part of it is, is because our doctors have to move on to the next patient. Our family wants us to be okay because there's, you know, not that they're sick of taking care of us, but they just want it to be okay and be over with. And it's by far not over with. Cancer does steal your sexy. Um, I think people don't realize that the medication that we're on ruins our libido. We have no feeling in our breasts. Um, you know, it just changes you physically. Um, I used to love to put pretty bras on. It was, I actually had about 45 bras. And when people would come and visit me, I gave them my bra because I couldn't wear it anymore. It was completely uncomfortable. My breasts weren't even that size anymore. Um, and that killed me to do because I felt like I was watching my sexuality just go right out the door. My girlfriend is a photographer. She took a bunch of pictures. Some were just like family shots, but she stayed with me for everything. Every uh, doctor's appointment, every scan, every d blood work, the mastectomy. She was in the hospital with me, everything. And she took all these pictures. and. I was blogging at the time. The only reason why I was blogging is for my family because they they needed to know what I was doing. Before I posted them, I shared them with the, with my family. I said, you guys want to see them? And I'll never, ever forget this. My son, who was uh, 10 at the time, he might have turned 11 by then, he said, I don't know if I want to see him. And I said, okay, that's fine. You don't have to. And he's like, no, I want to see him. And I was like, okay, you can. He's like, no, I don't want to see him. It went on for a while. And I was like, Sam, you know, do you want to see him? And he said, yeah, I do. So I showed him the pictures. and. They're graphic. They're not. There's nothing pretty or pink about them. They're you know drains coming out. They're they're intense. And he looked at me and he said, "Oh my God, thank God." And I said, "Thank God." That's an odd comment. He goes, "I thought you had two holes in your chest. I didn't realize you were going to be covered up." And I thought about that and I said to myself, "If he thinks this, how many other people have misconceptions of what it looks like underneath?" your clothing. So I said to Genevieve, let's have an, an art exhibit. So I opened the doors to over 600 people. The village that I live in, the fire marshal actually came because he was complaining of the streets, they were too busy. The news came, but I shared the pictures to my community, which was really difficult. Uh, a friend of mine who's one of my best friends turned to me and she was sobbing and she said, now I know what you went through. I had no idea. And I realized that this was something I needed to do. If you can't help the people in your backyard, who can you help? So that was really important to me. But then I took all the pictures that I had taken and I said to my family, I'm gonna share them on the internet. 
women and men were messaging me saying, oh my God, I look just like you. That's what I look like. Or, you know, that's what the DIP looks like. People under wanted to see it. It took the scary out. And I realized how important that was. I get messages daily, will you ask this question? Can you post this for me? And they're usually very private and intimate questions, ones that most don't even wanna ask their doctors. And if someone's asking it, then someone else wants to know the answer. People look at breast cancer because it's so marketed and they think that everyone's gonna be okay. I thought it, I was completely naive. I had no idea that you died from breast cancer. I thought, it, I, thought I was gonna be fine. All my friends were gonna be alive. And one by one, I watched these people die and I was so pissed about it. When I hear my friends talk about that, when my friends die, there's survivor guilt that hangs over that. And uh, that's also something that nobody talks about. 114 people die every single day of breast cancer. 114, if that was the flu, it would be an epidemic. You would, you would hear it on the news, but yet we're not doing anything about it. We have to stop the people from dying. Once we stop people from dying, I really believe we could eventually find a cure because that person is then chronic. They have a chronic illness and it can be treatable, but we're not doing that. So if 7% goes to metastatic research, that means that 93 is going somewhere else. It's going to education. What is education? It's stupid pamphlets that people, are you reading it? No, you're throwing it out. Uh, you know, I go into the high schools and I talk about breast cancer because Breast cancer is very prominent a young, amongst young people. And I mean like, I have a girlfriend who's 19 when she was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. 19, she's stage four. Their hormones are more intense because they're younger. They haven't, you know, dissipated. And their reoccurrence rate is higher. But we're not talking to the kids about this. And I can't understand that because it has the word breast in it. Don't look back, you're not going that way. Because I found myself a lot of times like trying to figure out why I got this, you know, what what could I have done differently? And the truth is, you just got cancer. You, you didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing you could have done differently. It's just life sometimes, and sometimes life sucks. So don't look backwards, stay in the moment, don't even look forward, because forward can be scary. And you have to deal with what's going on right now at that moment. And with that, control what you can. You can't control your doctor's appointments, you can't control the outcome, but you can control whether or not you're gonna snuggle with your kids a little bit longer, you're gonna go out to, to lunch with your girlfriends, you're gonna leave the dishes in the sink. You know, focus on things you can control because there's so much that's gonna be out of your control, it's gonna be overwhelming. Well, my boobs have been everywhere anyway, so what's the difference? <laughs> I'm kidding. I think it's really important to show all different aspects of cancer, whether you're male, whether you're female, whether you have one breast or two, or you've been you know, completely amputated and you have nothing and you're flat and fabulous, whether you're in this for the long haul or whether you're facing death's door. I think that it's really important to share everybody's story. One thing that I think is empowering about the project is none of our heads are in the, in the bare chested pictures. And that really resonates with a lot of people because they may look at me and say, oh my gosh, I look just like you or I look just like her. It makes us all seem like we're, we're not alone. This is anybody's disease, anybody's. And I think the project really did a great job of showing that. It showed a wide spectrum of ages and um, genders. And I think showing that and, and really uncovering what's behind the ribbon is really, really important. And that's why I participated.